What's up, guys? Episode 13 of um, Saving St. Etienne, and let's get straight to it. Shit. So, um, what's happened since you guys left off? Um, I think we stopped at Marseille here. So, but after we lost this first game to Brest after that match, but since then, we've been on a great run. We've won five league one games in a row, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Five matches in a row, and then we lost to Tottenham, but we beat Rapid 3-0, so now we're in a pole position to get second place in the group. Um, and so that will be decided. As long as we don't lose to St. Gallen today, if we tie or win, we'll be fine. And then we have a big match against PSG. So Because let me show you the table. So this is where we are in the in Ligue 1 right now. We're, we're challenging for Champions League, like, um, absolutely. And then... In low key, we're only four points behind PSG, which of course I'm not trying to think about winning the title or anything, but that would be absolutely crazy. I mean, if you think like to think about that, that would be absurd. So, um, yeah. Um, so let, let's go into the next match. Oh wait, no. There's one thing I want to tell you. Um, basically, I think it's because we're doing so well. I'm not positive, or maybe there is like somebody put in money. I I guess I'm not positive, but anyway. The um the team increased our transfer budget from like I think we had like four hundred thousand left. They increased it to nine point eight six eight um million uh, pounds. Unfortunately, we still only get twenty five percent of transfer revenue, but we do have a, a decent amount to spend. If I go to my transfer stuff here, we do have a decent amount to spend. We have about a hundred k on wages and like a, close to ten million on um uh, close to ten million. So we'll definitely be spending that in January. So um that's the that's the good news for sure. Here's a lineup. Palencia, so rough here in the back, of course. Uh, normal back four, except Pineda has a knock, so we're going to put in Palencia. And then we have Mvia and Yusuf in the middle. Um, Pussy Dragon on the right, and then Buwanga, Budabus, and Juric up top. So uh, let's. with that being said, let's get into it. And they have a free kick here from Schweigler. New two, and the header's just gone over. And they've kind of they've started out the game pretty well. I th oh, no, wait, that was us. Um, well... They, they got the first chance of the match, but we have a we can reply right here. Palencia down the wing. He's got a he's getting a game because Pineda's out and Palencia into the box and it looks like Rufel Rufel looks like Rufel has fouled him. So um, I mean we all know it's going to happen here, right? Like there's there's absolutely zero chance that this isn't going to be a penalty because that's just the way a football manager is. Like there's legitimately zero chance it's not a penalty and it's a penalty. Okay, so Rufley will. Did, committed the foul. Budaboos will step up to the spot. Hopefully he'll convert and give us a lead. A lead would be huge. And with a lead here, as long as we don't absolutely choke, this is the position that we're in now. Because although, although our goal differential is like absolutely, com like completely, like um, what do you call it? We're way ahead on goal differential. The thing is, I'm pretty sure it's head to head. So if we were to lose to um, St. Gallen, what would happen would be. Um, we obviously tied the first match and we would have lost the second one, so then we'd be behind them and tied on points. But the thing is that as long as we tie or win, we'll be second in the group. So I think I think that we'll be fine here. Um, good ball into Juric. Juric, oh, he can't miss there. That's a massive chance. That's an absolutely massive chance. If we go up two, it's pretty much over. But as I mean, if we win, I mean, if we, I think we're in a good position now, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, Buda Boost finds Pussy Dragon. That's a good ball movement. And Via. He's a little too far to do his signature shot from the top of the box. He has about eight goals this season now, I think. Nick into Budaboos. I think Nick was offsides. I was thinking that the whole time. And yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to call. It looks like Nick was offsides. That's why I didn't get too excited about it. Because not on this pass, but this pass back, wow, it was way closer than I thought it was. That was very close. That The, the linesman, I don't know how he got that right, but that was very close. Okay, and we have a throw in here on our, on our half of the pitch. Juric heads it forward, but Budaboos was not aware that that was what he was going to do. He kind of just stood there for a second, and it gave the St. Gallen defender time to get to it. Now Dragon hits it up the pitch. We're just kind of, looks like we're just kind of booting it up, just keeping it away from their, the goal, because as long as they don't score, we're fine. Like, we don't we don't really need the ball. We don't need to score again. We don't really need to put on too much pressure. We just need to, but I still do, because I don't want to be soaking up pressure, because we don't really... We're not. Our team is not built to do that at all. Our team is built to be high tempo, just try to take the ball, run a lot, you know, and out effort the other team basically. And that's how we can beat teams or compete against teams that are nest that might be considerably better than us. I would definitely not say that St. Gallen has a considerable uh, talent advantage, but I also did buy a center back from the Swedish second division, and I've been playing him every game. So like, 
I'm definitely bringing in players from odd places and making them key players. So, um, okay. I wanted to put in... Is there another player I can put in here? Okay, I hate when this happens. I think this is because of the new skin. Yeah, okay, I can put in Wagner and then put Kazri. Wait, what? Hold up. I want to put in Wagner for Kazri and then put Kazri in for Yusuf and then shit on them in the locker room. Just absolutely barf all over them. Ruefully throws it into Itin. That Itin looks for an option you can't find in. We're trying to counter here, but Wagner's header goes straight to Nuhu. And now they've played it back and trying to restart their attack. Ziggy. Z Ziggy looks around. He finds his center back. Letard plays a good ball, but Palencia's first to it. And it's kind of just ping pong football right now. Um, Ziggy hits it up again. The, this seems like they like to start their attacks through their goalkeeper. Juric, though, finds Wagner, and Wagner has a chance to make it too, but that's a horrendous finish. That is a horrid finish. I mean, he does have a lot to do there, but that is just absolutely despicable. Um, Juric, good hold up there. Palencia tries to find a pass. He cuts inside. He finds Kazri standing right next to him, and then the pass to Pussy Dragon just is not hit hard enough. Now Nick has space. Nick o does the overlap, finds Juric. Juric heads it into the bottom corner, seventh goal in all competitions, and that's a great cross from Nick. I love how he executes the overlap there, because you know how I like to switch Nick and, um, on offense, I like to switch Nick and let Pussy Dragon come back, and Pussy Dragon just stays here while Nick passes him, commits the overlap, and Juric with his 6-6 six -six frame just leaps over the their center back, who is honestly in a better position than Juric, but you know, just with the the you know, physical profile that Juric has. I mean, he really stood no chance. Okay, they have a throw in here. They're trying to get one back. Um, Haas, in space. It plays an interesting switch, but it ends up working out. Muheim puts the ball into the box, and Bobic heads it just over. One more highlight here, maybe, for the rest of the match. Ruiz, it looks like he was the substitute. He cuts in. That's a that's an interesting decision from Ruiz. Wh hold on, hold on. What? Did, am I tripping into... Did he just do a throw-in there? It looked like he threw it like a throw-in. I think maybe this was the highlight. Hold on. If I'm right here, yeah, so Ruiz picks it up here. He, they f end up finding the cross. Oh, wait, no. The, okay, no, I was just tripping. I don't know what I saw. I thought he threw it with two hands over his head. Okay, let's go live. Um, yeah, that, I thought it, it was just a very peculiar moment there. Um, who can I, okay, I can't put in anybody for Pussy Dragon. He's going to just die. I think I just sub out Dione because, I mean, I sub in Dione for, um, for Jurich. We'll just do that and end the match like that. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a great result. Um, we've gotten way farther in the Europa League than we did last campaign. You know, obviously we struggled with the lower te lower level teams last time, but, here we got 10 points from the group. I mean, we didn't do as good as well as Tottenham, but like, okay, they're a much better team than us. Uh, let's look at how the other groups ended. Fenner Bodge, uh, so Brest falls out. Um, Lyon, Lyon continues their Europa League campaign. So a lot, the teams around us are still in Europe as well. Besides, I mean, Brest isn't really challenging this year. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to say that, you know, just congratulate them. So I'm gonna come back with uh, for the PSG match. Schlet, schlet. And here's the lineup for the PSG game. Um, we put it's basically just this our our normal lineup, but um, we put in Wagner for Pussy Dragon because um, honestly because Wagner um, he uh, or no sorry because Pussy Dragon um, was both unfit and suspended, so Wagner's gonna come in there. He's probably our best backup option. Uh, this is kind of a hard role to fill, so I, I do under like I don't necessarily think that we need to. Can I don't necessarily think we have to focus on that with our money in the in the winter, but I definitely think it would be a decent idea to maybe bring in a backup or even on loan bring in a backup for that position, or maybe even if we could find a player that's better than than uh, Pussy Dragon out wide, we could do that as well. So. Um, Alrighty, they have Firmino now. They have Mbappe. 
Willian, Verratti, Herrera, Victor Fischer is extremely good in this game, Dogba, Marquinhos, Kempembe, and Bernat. And then Navas. Okay, well, that wasn't that's not great design there, but whatever. Um, and then here's you already know our lineup. I'm this is going to be a very difficult game. I mean, but it does. Okay, I don't know why that works every time because I don't know why they would. Oh my god. I'm just trying to unselect here, unselect here, unselect here, and go. I have faith in you. Make it a brilliant team talk. Of course it is. And go into the match. Okay, Mbappe is not coming in with a bunch of fitness. So apparently they definitely think of us as a threat because they've, they've risked Mbappe here. And, I mean, we are a threat. Look at that. Juric is about an inch away from putting us up 1-0 in just like the fourth minute. Um, I mean, if we look at this, right, if we win this match, right, Lyon and Nice are both a, ma a game ahead of us. So if we, but the issue is we're entering into a stretch where we play PSG now, we play Monaco after that, and then we play Nice after that. Where it's just like a v extremely difficult stretch of the season. Where we really show if we're gonna like because if we win like this match, I'm not too concerned about winning. Obvious. I mean, I I really want to win it, but like I'm not ex ho like I'm not gonna be mad if we don't win it. Basically, but like. Nice and Monaco, if we win those two games, we're really like announcing ourselves as the best team besides PSG for this season. I mean, obviously, quality wise, we aren't, but I just mean like form wise, like uh, how we're playing, because that's really all that matters. As Mbappe misses a massive chance there, probably having to do with the fact that he is extremely unfit for this match. But they've ri they have risked him anyway. I, I haven't looked to see who they have as strikers on the bench, but they are playing a 4 4 2, which is odd considering, you know, I mean, they're PSG. Wouldn't wouldn't expect a two striker formation from them because usually in real life Mbappe and Cavani sort of would play together or Mbappe and Icardi but like he plays off of him and it turns into more like a four, a four four one one but like I guess Mbappe is a striker so like I guess why I understand why the game has it as a four as a four four two and they probably have instructions where he hangs back anyway. What a goal that is from Budaboos and we're up one nil. I don't know how we how I have no idea how we've abs actually absolutely dominated this match looking at the stats but Buda Boost takes a brilliant shot Navas has to do better there in my opinion it curls too much towards the keeper towards the end there but with at, with a lead here we do go up to second place with a match in hand on these teams below us which I mean could is huge, right? Because if we win this game, then we don't have to worry about winning both the other ones. And Jurich makes us go up 2-0. What a result this could be. I mean, I don't know if I want to go defensive. I don't know if I want to change anything at all. We're playing so well. We have 12 shots to their one. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Honestly, I've, I was not expecting this coming into the match. I thought, you know, we'd lose the game. Oh, well, like, but like we should be competitive in it. But, oh, and that's, okay. They put a ball in towards Mbappe, and Mbappe does what Mbappe does, and he scores there. I think Dolberg, let me check to see if Dolberg is still the league's top scorer. Dolberg has 18 goals. Acardi has 16 goals. And the next person, Mbubi, has 8. So Dolberg and Acardi are in a, a chase for for um, golden boot. That's like, that's Dolberg has a goal every game. Is he going to get poached? Who is he wanted by? Tottenham, Milan, Juve, and Napoli. Okay, so Nice is fucked. Because once they lose Dolberg, they're going to just start dropping matches. I mean, that has to be the case. That He's scoring a goal a game. They can't just replace that. And if he's gone in the winter, I mean, that's one more Champions League spot that's just free. PSG trying to get back. Oh, what a turn from Fisher. What a turn that was. He could look for Mbappe or just take the shot himself. But because he's made that choice, Ruffier has made a comfortable save. And while we've had the majority of the shots, I mean, the possession is worrying, obviously, but I wasn't expecting to possess against PSG necessarily. I think, I mean, this has been a brilliant half. Packed match, uh, the crowds behind us. This has been an absolutely brilliant match, uh, and I mean, I mean, I mean, I have to tell. Uh, do I do this? It, oh my god, I can't. I, <laughs> that was such a risk because it's so, it's so fucking stupid, but it worked. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with that. I'm gonna say Wagner. I'm gonna encourage his ass by telling him he's garbage, and we're gonna go into the second half. Ex not making any halftime subs, which I know that's rare for me because I just like to just pull people out if they're doing garbage. Don't even give them a chance to do better. But okay, Mbappe's fitness is really not going down as fast as it sh as it would be if it wasn't Mbappe. 
And Bob, he gets the ball now. Fisher, Kimpembe, and it's a great save from Riffier, keeping our lead intact. And PSG is definitely getting back into this match. But Yusuf, Yusuf is looking to get us maybe a two, main, I mean, retain our two goal lead. He tries to play through to Jurich. That's a terrible ball from Budabu. He has to do better there. And now PSG, could they counter and get back into the, uh, uh, could they counter and get back into the match? I apologize. My apologies. They look like they're just playing around the back with no, uh, they look like they have no urgency whatsoever, but then one chance, Mbappe's played through, and Ruffier makes the save. It wasn't convincing, but he's done enough to keep it out, and Wagner d does great to intercept that pass right there, as they could have had to create another chance if he hadn't. And it looks like Nick has picked up a knock here, a twisted knee, and I, I just don't, I don't want to risk and whoever, whoever, who is on that left side? Because Nick, losing Nick would be a, a big issue here in this match. But I also don't want to risk him for the rest of the season. And Palencia is probably our best sub anyway. So we're going to put in Palencia. It's not that big of a fall off, even though it is a fall off. Nick has had a wonderful season so far. Um, but I'd rather, I'd rather have him rested for the rest of the match like the rest of the matches we have later this week. Because not only do we have that difficult stretch, but it's all in one week. And wow. Wow. All I know, all I've learned from that is that maybe pace in a center back is important. I have been disregarding that for forever, for as long as I've been playing this match. But I mean, playing this game. But look at Vucher. How does he not get to this ball first? He is waddling back. I know he's 6'6", six, six, and this isn't his role, but Mbappe just completely takes advantage of his lack of speed. Even on 62%, Mbappe caught up to the ball before it, like... He just absolutely ran by him. Like he didn't. He was behind, and he still, even on 61% fitness, did that. And they're not taking him out. They've already made all three subs. They're risking Mbappe. He could. He could easily get injured here, and that would be a massive loss for their season. Especially, I'm sure they have Champions League aspirations. Budabus gets it back here. Oh, it's just wide. That's a massive chance for Budabus. He could have gotten his second goal of the game. I think we have to make some subs here, with just seven minutes left. We have to take out. We have to put in Dione. Um, I'm not putting in Cristaldi ever again, I don't think. Um, and then I think we have to put in Kazri for Buanga and let Budabu's Kazri and Dione play up top for the last seven minutes of the match. <sighs> oh, and right when I've done, right when I make a change, there's a highlight and it's on our side of the pitch, and it looks like Adrissa Gay puts the ball in and. It's, it's Villa. I don't know who that is, but it's it's Villa, and he heads it, and it Sebastian Villa. I have not heard of him. He might, he might be a PSG youth player, but it looks like it has been called offsides. Unlucky for Villa, but Vucher stepping up and not didn't look like it was on purpose, but he does he does inadvertently keep him offsides. And if we can keep this tie, I mean, although we were winning for such a long period of the match, I will still be extremely proud of a tie. As I mean, PSG obviously still is a much better team, but. They've played it in, and Firmino, Firmino's on the run. Firmino, and, if, and that's a big save from Ruffier. PSG now has four clear-cut chances, and we have still kept them out of the match, or at least out of the lead. And maybe there's one last chance for us or for PSG at the end of this match. Hopefully it's for us, as we, maybe we can nick it off them in the back in, on our side of the pitch. But it looks like Sebastian Villa, the substitute, has space to run here. And he's run past Kashri, but Kashri makes the tackle. And PSG, look, with this throw in, may have their last chance in the match. Dogba throws it in. And it looks like he's looking for a long throw, but he doesn't actually. He just plays it to Mbappe, who probably is a, on the verge of a heart attack right now. And the match ends in a draw right there. Although we have had... The, Dominated with shots and shots on target. We have been outpossessed. PSG did create the better chances, and I'm very proud of the boys for getting that result in the first place. That's a great job. And where does that put us in the league? With a tie, we've gone up to fourth place, and with a with a win, we'll be even on matches with the rest of the league, and um, we'll be up into second, four points behind PSG. Uh, Monaco, and Monaco's who we're playing next, but. This top five is this is going to be extremely competitive for the rest of the season. Maybe not PSG, but this two to five area, unless Nice falls off because um, Dolberg does leave, is going to be extremely competitive for the rest of the season. We're all just separated by one point. I'm going to tell them that wasn't good enough. Fuck these niggas, bro. Okay, yep. Yeah, well, it could have been a better team talk, but I, I'm not upset at that result. That's a massive result, honestly, the, to get a tie from PSG. Even though we did lose... We, we, we did have the opportunity to take a victory. We were, we were up 2-0 at one point. I don't know if I should have gone defensive. My thought process was that 
we were just doing so we were doing so well at that point in time in in the match that it was I just didn't it didn't feel like it made any sense to go it didn't feel like it made any sense to go defensive I didn't want to change anything at all personally um so there's not any big matches for a while um the cup's really too close we'll have the winter break here yeah, maybe we just come back for this cup game against Chasselet and Bordeaux. We'll come up, for, come back for these two, and then the next episode would be like these two. Sounds good. Okay. Um, see you guys later, slimes and slime, slime masseuses. Um, subscribe, uh, like, and uh, follow the social medias down below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Shit. <laughs>